Ferrari have revealed their upgrade path after the Monaco Grand Prix, and it seems like the Maranello team are now ready to build on the momentum that they've had after Leclerc's sixth career win and the first one on his home turf. The SF24 is proving to be a real headache for Red Bull. With an increased competitiveness from McLaren, we could see massive turmoil in the 2024 season, but the Constructors' Championship is definitely up for grabs. And more importantly, can Ferrari capitalize on this moment in Canada yet again? It goes without saying that Ferrari is a team that all of the F1 world cheers for right now, especially because of the fact that they're so close in competitive manners with Red Bull and McLaren. While many criticized Fred Vasseur for approaching the car with an overly conservative touch, it seems like the Frenchman found exactly what he needed to in order to challenge Red Bull on a more regular basis. After all, being 24 points behind them in the Constructors' Championship and 31 points in the Drivers' Championship is a solid basis to be on after 8 races in the Championship, which is better than what Ferrari had in 2022, when they started the season with 2 wins out of the first 3 venues. Be that as it may, Ferrari are now looking forward to improving the momentum and capitalizing on the newest upgrades, as Vasseur admitted that it would take until Barcelona to understand in which direction the SF24 is moving. Of course, this was to be expected, because you cannot extract all of the data possible from one race, which is Imola, the one that they introduced the package to, while in Monaco, the track-specific characteristics disallowed the teams to be looking at the real data from their cars. Regardless, Ferrari has proven to be the most dominant team here, and now they're looking forward to building on this momentum for Montreal as well. Vasseur said that there will be upgrades coming at every race in 2024, with the upcoming one in Canada likely focusing on the qualifying pace of the car, something we've seen that Ferrari struggles with once the calendar reaches more traditional circuits. Even though the tyre management of the car is massively improved, it is worth nothing if the SF24 is not in the first starting row, where they can be in a position to challenge Red Bull in a tyre war and utilise everything they have in their own car power. When talking about the upcoming future of the SF24, as well as the development paths for Ferrari, Vasseur said, Canada is almost the opposite of Monaco in terms of speed and downforce. But there are curbs, slow corners and chicanes. Some traits are similar to Monaco. We did well in Melbourne, Imola and Miami, and there were differences in terms of layout, compound and asphalt. It would be tight for everyone with differences of a tenth and a half. As we saw in Imola, the perfect qualifying lap can be disturbed by one wrong entrance in a chicane or one missed braking point, because the cars are now so close and we have a legitimate five-man battle for the pole position. I don't think Perez would be high up there because of the deficit he has to Verstappen in both qualifying and racing. But to be honest, nothing would delight the F1 fans more if the Mexican driver finds a lot of pace and performance now that the rumours have been circulating about him extending the contract with Red Bull for at least one more year. That's up to Red Bull and Perez to fix, but what Ferrari can capitalise on is that they have two extremely powerful drivers behind the SF24, which is always extremely important when it comes to fighting in both championships. As the team can build the strategy around them if Verstappen is somehow found in between both cars throughout the course of the race. This is why qualifying matters the most, and this is why Ferrari is looking optimistic to extract more performance out of the SF24 on a one lap performance basis. Last year, the team was extremely good in this section, but then lacked race pace performance due to the tyre wear presenting a massive issue for the car. But in the opening races of 2024, it seems like they overcompensated a lot in the other way which is why they're now seeking the perfect balance of having a great race pace and a great one-lap performance that could land them in the front row in Montreal. When talking about this matter, Vasseur discussed the impact of the package that Ferrari installed in Imola and how it will be tweaked for the upcoming race in Canada, adding, Last year we were competitive in qualifying, and we had to suffer in the race. We suffered in some corners and less in others, and we worked on all of these weaknesses and took a step forward, which perhaps compromised us a little in qualifying, but it gave us many other benefits. But since the budget cap poses a huge obstacle for all the teams on the grid, Ferrari will be cautious when it comes to bringing new upgrades to their cars. This means that we should not be expecting massive leaps in performance and massive upgrades being brought every weekend, as the next big one is prepared for Silverstone. Until then, these small upgrades will be more or less focused on the tyre degradation and the silver lining when it comes to pushing them to the maximum while still saving a massive chunk of them during the race. Ferrari will also move to France when it comes to testing the Pirelli tyres, with more activity scheduled for Maranello later that month, 
The Pirelli tests that will be conducted on Paul Ricard will have more of a focus on the 2025 Pirelli compounds, as it would be Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc who will try to extract as much data as possible from this test and implement it on their cars. These are all important things to do in the meantime because the cars won't differ as much as they are right now, meaning that all of the data can be implemented on the 2024's version of the cars and then learn a thing or two in terms of making the car more competitive over the one lap performance. There's another thing that Ferrari can bet on, and that is the unfortunate crash in which Perez participated in Monaco. Obviously, the Austrian team found themselves in some deep waters with the new design of the car, because they're yet to understand where all of that performance can come from after having such a tight operating window. Verstappen himself said that the car has a fundamental flaw that he does not expect to be fixed before 2025. However, it doesn't mean that we're going to see a massive drop-off in performance from Red Bull. Quite the contrary. The team is still hopeful to fight at the front, with the difference that now they might be forced to postpone some upgrades because they'll be forced to spend two to three million dollars on repairing Perez's car rather than working on upgrades. This is something that's been discussed by Helmut Marko and Christian Horner, and the impact of Perez's crash will certainly derail Red Bull from their original development path in a period where every point matters and in a period in which Red Bull is again slowly but surely turning out to be a one-man show with Perez's fading form. This isn't something that the Austrian squad were hoping for, as Helmut Marko went on to say, If we have to do something extra due to the greater competitiveness of Ferrari and McLaren, we are naturally handicapped. If there's another crash, not everything will be available for both cars. The million-dollar crash in Monaco clearly affects us, but there are considerations about what to do with the car. $3 million are then missing for our considerations. In the worst case, this means that we can do less development. Although Red Bull found themselves in unwanted place with their upgrade plans, it translated only good news for Ferrari, who managed to keep up the pace and be the most dominant team in Monaco. Then again, it's just one race, and we shouldn't be hyped about it because we must not forget that McLaren have also won a race this season, and they've been the second team right after Ferrari when it comes to gathering the most amount of points over the course of the past three weekends. 85. Now that Norris has felt how it is to stand on the highest place on the podium, and Piastri was extremely close at P2, the situation could be extremely different from the Woking Bay squad as well, as they are expected to present a real threat to Ferrari's challenge especially because they have also fixed a massive issue that plagued their races in the past couple of years. For example, McLaren was extremely satisfied with their high-speed corner performance last year, but the slow speed was utterly bad, and now they've managed to balance both of these into one great overall package that can be fighting for race wins in a much more regular manner. Right now, Ferrari is fighting on two fronts, tackling Red Bull from the front but also keeping an eye on McLaren, as they're also looking to be massive issue for the remainder of the 16 races in 2024. At the very best, Ferrari should expect a lot of competitiveness from Verstappen and both McLaren drivers week in and week out, but with the current issues of Red Bull, there could be circuits like the one in Montreal and Singapore that won't fit the design of the RB20 due to the bumpiness and the curbs that need to be attacked with as much speed as possible, the primary flaw of the Austrian team's car. With this in mind, what do you think about the upgrades that we brought to the SF24? And do you think they'll be enough to tackle down Red Bull from the top spot in the championship and keep McLaren at bay? Let us know in the comments below, and once you do that, make sure to click on the video that's appearing on your screen right now.